they were the product I was most excited for. So um, I'm just going to show you here. You can see the adorable colored tins. I think, honestly, that was part of the big draw was like, they're not plain black like my other ones. They're colored and gorgeous. I see a lot of people using it on Instagram. So, of course, you know, monkey see, monkey do. But also because it is incredibly similar to the watercolor confection sets by Prima Marketing, which appeal to the exact same crowd and cost less than half of what these Jane Davenport watercolors are. The year was 2018, and one Australian woman had the mixed media YouTube community in a chokehold. But just as soon as she was there, she was gone. So I'm here to ask you all, whatever happened to Jane Davenport? <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Panda Maru Draws. I am an illustrator, a storyteller, and a concerned mother. And I went on not as much as a deep dive as you would think, but a deep dive to find out whatever happened to Jane Davenport. Her watercolor tins were everywhere in 2018. Everybody was raving about them. The tins were so cute, but now you don't hear anything about her. Did she not have staying power? Were her products just not that good? Was everybody so tired of getting black watercolor tins in 2018 that the fact that she was making blue and gold ones just really had us all feral? You tell me. But also it was it was the last one. It was the last one. Um uh, but I went on a journey. I went on a search to find out what was going on with her, what she was doing now and if her watercolors were actually worth the tins. All right, um, I guess, cue footage? Okay, thanks. So, um, I went to Jane Davenport's site and saw the prices of her products and um, almost had an aneurysm. So uh, I thought, oh, okay, well, I won't be getting them from here. Let's just, you know, look around and see and I, I couldn't believe it like a 9 by 12 watercolor sketchbook $57.99 what and I it's not even I don't even think it's cotton so I went to just see if we could find it first I went to see what the prices of like watercolor sketchbooks usually are because I thought well maybe I'm tripping I wasn't I wasn't you guys um watercolor journals are not that expensive this was just me checking to see uh what size it was just to make sure um and yeah yeah and I feel like paying like 25 dollars for a sketchbook is like pretty pretty pricey so like 57 dollars So what I'm trying to tell you guys is I did not get anything but the tin. I checked Blick, I checked Jackson's. The only place you're getting um, Miss Davenport's products is, are from Miss Davenport herself. And yeah, yeah. So this was uh, the descent that I decided to take because I thought this would be a cool deep dive to do. So let's all just remember that this is nobody's fault but my own as we continue down this um, Australian uh, mixed media artist rabbit hole. Jane Davenport is an Australian mixed media artist. She is a businesswoman, first and foremost. If you go to her website or just look at any of her books or uh, art supplies that she's designed, you'll see that she has a very uh, cohesive theme. If I had to describe it, I would say it's like fairy, pretty girl, beautiful, whimsical. And when I first discovered Jane Davenport and her uh, art, and her art supplies. I actually kind of liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I, I, okay, I might be giving her more credit or maybe this is true, but I kind of thought it was like a little bit of a like surrealist take on like women's beauty. But now I, I think, I think, I don't think, I'm not sure about that. I think, I think I might've just been looking too deep into it. But um, I went to her site and uh, it was very interesting. 
been when I first discovered Jane Davenport, it was through Michaels and Joanne. So everything was kind of in their like craft section. And it was at least according to Michaels, more geared towards crafters and stampers. You know, it wasn't over there with the Windsor and Newton stuff. It was it was, you know, with the with the mixed media hobby girls, girlies. And this is like this is just how Michaels and Joann's and Hobby Lobby seem to take it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying how they presented it. It was very like, I'm a mom with a Pinterest and an Etsy shop kind of vibe. And I was fine with that. I uh, A real point of contention in my life is uh, a lot of artists uh, that I personally know and just like kind of the air out there is like once you can't be a mom and an artist, like if you're a mom, you're not an artist, you're like a crafter or like, you know, a hobbyist or something like that. And I just, I don't, I don't like how much gatekeeping there is in the art community now. And honestly, throughout history, if you think about it, every new art movement was made because somebody gate kept, or a lot of people gate kept people out of the last art movement. And you would think that eventually it would stop. But I mean, here we are, here we are in 2023. But I am deviating so far from my subject back to Jane Davenport so I went to her site because I couldn't find her watercolors anywhere anymore which is once again like I said crazy I mean I know like not everything has staying power but I feel like <sighs> that Windsor Newton Cotman set has been in Michael's since Michael's was built and I mean I guess Windsor Newton is more of an established brand so there you go but you know what I mean like you could still find Prima Tech. But yeah, it was, there was nothing. You could, I couldn't, I, I looked. The literal only place that you can find Jane Davenport watercolors, at least, is Jane Davenport's site. <sighs> so I had to make a decision. Leave tonight or live and die this way. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I had to make a decision. Get the tin do a comparison, see if it was worth all the hype from her site in Australia using Australian money and Australian mail or uh, scrap this whole video idea. But I had already done too much research, so I did it. And was it worth it? You tell me. No, no, it was not worth it. Cue footage. So it finally came. It took forever, but I mean, it did come from Australia, so... There you go. So this is how it came. Very cute, very, very, very on brand. And this is what came in it. Um, so I got a pen. I got a paintbrush that, oh, well, we'll talk about it later. And the, you know, the girl herself, the glitzy palette. So that's how she does her swatches. That's how she's always done her swatches. She also names the colors um, the same way that like companies name like hair dye. So it's like Temptress and Ariel and stuff like that. So here's me first getting it out. And I was very confused because there's no ring on it. There's no ring on it. Um, yeah. Oh, it includes two. See, look, look at the names. Enchantress. Uh, sea mist, flirtatious tresses. And this is the little swatch card that uh, she she provides you. So this is the same, this is the same. What isn't the same though is the inside of it. All right, I'm in mom mode, which means I'm one-handed. So, first, and I feel like most egregious difference. Where? Where's my tray? Where's my tray? Also, as you can see, you used to be able to fit a third row of paints in there if you so desired. You're not fitting, are they even the same size still? So it needs to be about, so they're the same size, so there's no real excuse for that, so it's probably cheaper. Yeah, that's plastic. This is plastic. And this is where the video should have stopped, but it didn't. So here I am deciding 
what supplies I'm going to use. And I was going to do a whole bunch of tests. So I decided, yeah, you know what? I'll do it in different things. So here's my Blick hot pressed uh, pad that I saw it in half. Here's my Hanamule. And I do believe, oh yeah, and my pen tallet. So I decided I'm going to do swatches and I'm going to do things that are, you know, actually would look good with the colors because I learned my lesson with the Ohuhu markers. I didn't want to make that mistake again. Um, so I decided I was going to do birds like tropical birds, you know, a lot of blues and greens and birds. I felt like you can't go wrong with that. So here I am just doing the swatches, just seeing what we can work with. Also, I didn't swatch the two metallic colors because I didn't want it to contaminate my paint water. So yeah, first um, we're doing a shoe bill and I do believe that this is my Hanamule uh, sketchbook. Now I will say this, I had high spirits at this point. I was putting the paint down, it was flowing nice, it was looking good. You know, I was like, you know what, like, okay, it was really expensive. I'm definitely going to talk about how expensive it was and all that, but at least these paints are decent. You know, so if somebody finds them, you know, like secondhand or they're a gift, you're, you know, you're not going wrong with it. That's how I felt. Um, you know, okay, we're going to try and keep this positive. I love shoe bills. Have you guys ever seen shoe bills? They're so weird looking. They look like um, Muppets. They don't look like real creatures, but um, they're these giant birds and they're, they're very, um, I don't know if friendly is the right word, but like they don't like to like fight or get into it and they can't fly very far. I think the farthest they can fly at like one time is like 75 yards or something. Like they're huge. And when they're happy, they make this like clacking sound with their beak that sounds like gunfire. Like you guys should look it up there. I, I love them. I love shoe bills. So I was, um, you know, painting something that I loved and just trying to do like you know do do all the watercolor tests see how they overlay see how the paints mix and i know the shoe bills looking real like cruddy i'm sorry they kind of they kind of just are they're like this blue like muddy kind of color so you know so far no complaints with the paint but you know thinking back and knowing what i know now i'm really glad i started with my hanamule sketchbook because of the materials that I use I think that Mahana Mule is like the best quality it's really good paper you know it's it's um cotton so I really think that that is what really helped out I think if I would have started uh, no no spoil well spoilers I think if I would have started with that Blick hot press paper I would have given up but yeah so I was I was like okay you know like this is fine like it's it's you know very um weak when it dries down but like we can layer it it's doing fine it's doing good it was the paper you guys it was definitely and totally the paper so you know what this is a, if you hey if you guys have been looking at the hanamule watercolor sketchbook and you don't know i'm telling you that paper is fantastic look you I, hey but don't take my word for it the proof is in the pudding that paper is really good and it really uh fooled me into into having higher hopes for um miss miss davenport's uh glitzy palette so i just want to talk about the paints themselves for a little bit i know that there's a lot of like uh what i would call like specialized kind of palettes out there i know that daniel smith does a lot of them where it's like just blues or just purples or you know something like that i know core has some that are like super granulating or all oh, this is for urban sketching so i'm not really gonna say that making an all green well it's not all green a mostly green palette is not good because you know i think that there probably are some people out there that might enjoy that. Um, the problem I think really stands with, so Jane's a smart woman and she probably realized, hey, you can't, nobody's gonna buy just green and blue. You gotta get some other mixes in there. So there is a yellow, there's a cool yellow and then there's a warm red, a cool red and then, um, 
I would argue both those blues are cool, but you know, I'm not, I'm not the expert here. Because there's just the cool yellow, you still can't get everything you need to get. And I guess that's a moot point because I don't think anybody would be buying this palette to get, you know, all the colors they need to get. It's just, it's very limiting. And another issue, I looked all over. I cannot find what these uh, pigments are for these paints. It was so hard because one, they're not named like standard names. Like it's not like Cerulean Ultramarine or anything like that. And then they're not numbered any kind of way. So I'm just typing in like Jane Davenport Temptress and stuff like that. And it, it was just such a headache to like try to figure it out. So I have no idea what these paints are made of. I seriously doubt if any of them are single pigments, but I don't know. Maybe the reds and the, maybe the reds, the blue and the yellow are. I don't know. What I do know is as soon as you start mixing them, they get real muddy. It's not as, um, well, actually, I think it was pretty obvious with the shoe bill, but it's not as obvious on this paper because once again, just a testament, this is not, this is not a Hana, Hana Mule sponsorship, but if you guys ever do want to sponsor me, I'm down, I'm down. Um, but I just really, I just, I really wanted this to work out. I really did. I spent a lot of money. I really wanted to have a good time painting and for this to all work out and be cutesy. Okay. <laughs> this is, you guys, this is where I broke. So I'm now painting Lovebirds on my Blick hot press paper. I bought this Blick hot press paper in several different sizes, which was dumb. But it was like, this was, this was, I bought it a while ago. I bought it when I was taking an aqueous media class. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. I'll have an instructor there that can help me and then I can get a better handle on hot press paper because it was something I really wanted to get into because I do illustration. My instructor was basically like, yeah, I don't know why you're trying to mess with that. Just get some cold press paper. Like, don't, don't do this. So that wasn't the most helpful. But also I've just come to the conclusion that this Blick hot press paper is not good. So this is going to be a double whammy because you know what else isn't good? These paints. I don't know if you guys can tell how many layers of green I put on those, uh, those little, those adorable little lovebirds, but it was at least three and it's that light. I am gonna make some mixes. I'm trying to make like a, a brown for the um, trees right now. Um, yeah, it is what it is. It, I, this this color is probably the best color for the for the brown trees that I'm gonna get. I think I'm about to like really mess it up. Oh yeah, it's coming. Yeah, and make it really. Yeah, there it is. Like it's sort of like a. It almost looks like hot sauce water. I don't know what it looks like, but it's way, it's way too orange tinted. Um, and just, yeah, the paper is not good as you can so clearly see. Um, it just doesn't give you enough time to work with anything. Um, I don't have a crazy amount of experience with hot press paper. I really do like it. Um, the only ones that I've used, you know, with any kind of recollection is this Blick one and then I have like 10 sheets of the uh what is it Arches Arches hot press paper and it's really good obviously it's Arches so I would like to get more but I'm also getting to the point where it's like I've got too much stuff to just be out here buying stuff I'm really gonna try um to to go a long time without buying any more art supplies and just be happy with what I what I have wish me luck and if you guys are wondering why I'm not talking about this painting what's there to talk about I'm just piling on greens and greens and greens and piling on browns and browns and browns and it's not doing anything these paints are not good I think there's probably a lot of filler in them and I think one that there's a lot of filler in them because you can see when it dries it looks like nothing and two if you look at the actual paint like you see the the blue the second blue um the one right next to the red you see that indentation in it the only thing that i had painted before this was the shoe bill you're telling me i used that much paint crazy okay this is when i broke i put at least four layers on these little birdies heads and when it dries it's going to look like absolutely nothing i was so mad i was furious i paid 
I think it was like almost $60 for these stupid paints. It wasn't even the same tin. The tin doesn't even lay flat. You can see all the blue is like puddling down because it's tilted up so high you can't even push it down. It's plastic in the middle so you can't even get a third row in there. That brush that she provided was the shettiest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I've, I've used like family dollar brushes that didn't shed as much as that brush shed. It's ridiculous. So I was like kind of losing my mind at this point. I was kind of losing my mind because it felt like I wasn't doing anything. It felt like I was just smearing water on the painting. <sighs> Who wants to deal with that? You see it? You see me trying to mix the green and it's just flooding that blue? I know none of you were gonna do this anyway, so I'm pretty much just talking to myself. Do not buy these paints. Do not buy these paints. Also, don't buy this Blake hot press paper. I'm sorry, Blake. I don't know what's going on with y'all, but like, this is bad. I don't know about their cold press paper. I'm not gonna say anything, but this, this is garbage. Look at that. Could you tell if I put anything on that, uh, that tree branch or not? Did I just rub water all over it? Or did I paint on it? You tell me. That's me trying to get their little, cause you know, they have like little, um, it almost looks like blush marks on their little cheeks. So I was trying to like blend it all in. It looks like nothing. I'm at a loss for words and yet I have so much to say. Ridiculous. So this is where I just um, went rogue and got out my Hemi gouaches and said, listen, this is already a wash. I'm at least about to have a good time. So the rest of this is just me already saying this painting is a wash, so I might as well just do what I want and um, painting with my Hemic washes. So I'm gonna stop talking for a while and you guys can just vibe out to, to some music and then I'll, I'll talk to you later with my uh, thoughts and some tin comparisons so you can see exactly what it used to be and what it is now. All right. See you in a few. Okay, so I have some different palettes here just for reference. So this right here is the new Jane Davenport Glitzy palette and it's not new as in it just came out, but it's um like the one you can still, that you buy from her site. This is what it is. It doesn't say that it's uh, like reformulated or different or anything, but I'm just gonna show you. So I bought this one this year for this video because I couldn't find my old one. So this is what it looks like. You see it's, just this part right here that doesn't even, is there anywhere I can show you? It doesn't even stay flat. Um, there's a, a plastic part in the center. On the back, it doesn't have a, a little ring for you to hold your fingers. It's just got like these 
rubber grips for some reason and it's I, I don't know what it's made out of but it's not the same it's like not even heavy it's not the same so okay so put that right here these two are the two that I got way back in 2018 yeah, we all know our best friend Michaels had that 40% off coupon so they were like I'm gonna say they were like around 15 18 dollars um I paid full price for this plus Australian shipping and I'm gonna tell you guys right now it was not worth it but it is the reason I said this video is going out this is the reason so this is the who oh, I don't even remember this was glitzy this was bright this was neutral or or natural or this was like the skin tone one none of the paints are in there anymore just so you know this is the only one that still has Jane Davenport paints in it so um this is where I just keep like some of my extras so just so you can see the difference like I said this does not stay flat this one is flat it has a mixing tray. It actually has like a metal thing that you can take out. You can put in a third row. You see how close these are together? Which is weird to me because they're the same. This one might be a touch bigger, but they're the same width. But because they put this plastic insert in and I'm, I'm guessing to um, save costs, you can't, you can't do anything with this. And then this is, I mean, it's the same deal. Uh, this is where my Daniel Smiths live. Put it on the other side. Move these out the way real quick. But like you see like mixing tray, uh, another mixing tray that actually lays flat because the problem with this is, and you can see it happening, is because it's at an angle, all the paint slides down and then it it mixes with itself and gets muddied. Um. It's just, and it's, uh, I mean, I know there's other um, palettes that only give you like two mixing wells, but I feel like they're usually not as many colors. I don't know. I was just really disappointed. And I think they reformulated this in uh, 2020 is what I, I do believe I saw. But yeah, and then these are, these are, um, not Jane Davenport ones but I just want to show you just for a uh, reference so once again the new the new girl the new Jane Davenport this is a a schminke schminke I don't know how to say it I don't I don't speak German I think it's I think it's schminke but I'm not a hundred percent sure but the same thing you know mixing well mixing well this one also has a problem of like tilts up a little bit I always want to push it down but this was kind of expensive so I don't want to push it down you know what I mean but once again Schwinka ones you can't fit a third row right here but you can fit a paintbrush in here and then this is so the Schwinka one was expensive this mead and this is just a meeting case that I bought just to put uh, my paints in this was this big old case Oh God, they're everywhere. Anyway, let's see if I can even, oh, now you can see my desk is cluttered. Okay. So this was uh, $18, maybe less than that. And it, if it's all this in there. And the reason I bring it up, it was empty. It did not come with these. These are uh, my, my Van Gogh paints. And then these are my Windsor Newton these are my Van Gogh paints and then these are my Windsor Newton Cotman paints and then I think this is like one half pan of like Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. I'm not I'm not crazy sure but I just wanted to put them in a place because I had them in like a, a Tupperware container before and I, I didn't I didn't like that. So this is where they live but the reason I bring up the empty tin that didn't have any paints in it is because I can't say for certain I truly believe that everybody bought the Jane Davenport paints for the tins. Back then you couldn't get these like super cute decorative tins or at least if you did they were like super expensive. This is like a special edition one even so even now this isn't like crazy common. 
So back then, Jane Davenport was like the girl. You got paint. The paint wasn't terrible. It was um comparable, I guess. It wasn't, you know, um, but I don't think that's the thing. I don't think anybody kept the paints. I think they all used them for a bit and then got rid of them and then kept these really cute tins. This is adorable. This is adorable. Everybody, this is adorable. And so I'm just thinking for people that maybe go back and watch old YouTube videos and stuff from like five years ago they see this and they're thinking i want a cute case don't do it because you're gonna get this you're gonna get this and i had to <laughs> you could not go anywhere back in five years ago and not see some jane davenport stuff in michael's joanne's hobby lobby all that kind of jazz it was a pay i had to order this from her site and pay australian shipping to get this so it's not that's what I'm saying it was like it was a real flash in the pan kind of situation and I'm just I'm just really disappointed because she didn't have to word on the street is allegedly that Jane Davenport's actual paints are made and formulated in a similar way to the um what are they called Prima confection paints into Mungio paints. And I didn't want to spend any more money on, on this deep dive that nobody asked for. So I didn't get the, the Prima and the Mungio paints. But from everything that I've heard, both of those paints are better than these Jane Davenport paints. And even back in 2018, the Mungio paints were a lot less expensive than the Jane Davenport paints. So, but they didn't, but they didn't come in a cute tin. You couldn't get a cute tin. But I just remember even back then when I knew very little about watercolor, looking at, if can you see, like looking at the, the way the paints look and being like, huh, that's really strange. I've never really seen them look like that. And then it hasn't happened so much with, I mean, it has happened a little bit with this. Like if you can see the indentation in the blue, and uh, in the in this red too. Also, the, all the paints have like Temptress and Ariel and names like that. So it also makes it really kind of difficult to figure out. But it seems like water really, really ate through these paints like really quickly. I remember, especially with the brights, when I had the brights feeling like I was doing something wrong because of how much paint was like they're not in here I don't know why I opened it again um how much paint I was using up on these teeny tiny little watercolors that I was using I know oftentimes in our society today things are based off of how much money you make how much power did you gain how much notoriety do you, did you get but at the end of the day sometimes you just really have to ask yourself did I have fun? Did this feed something within me? Did this give me some kind of peace or serenity or comfort? And that's what I had to ask myself in buying these paints, painting with them, getting that third tin to add to my collection. Did that fulfill something inside of me that would help me feel more content or whole? And the answer is hell no. No, it didn't do shit. It made me really mad I had to pay all that money to get it from australia it was not cheap then I, I get it it's not even the same tin that ain't that ain't metal that's plastic the tin was the one thing she had going for her and she changed it like what are you doing because she doesn't care jane davenport is a business man not a businessman yeah that's how it goes yes yes she uh because I bought it from her site, I've been getting nonstop emails about the retreats I can go on with Jane and the classes I can take with Jane. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. And yes, I thought about returning it, but she charges you a restocking fee, which was like $35. I don't know if that was in Australian or American. I was too blind with rage to figure it out. And then I have to pay for shipping back to Australia. You think I got that kind of money? This ain't monetized. I have 100 subscribers for Pete's sake. So no, I didn't have a good time. It wasn't fun, but I had already bought the damn thing. So we were getting a video out of that, no matter what. But let's try to pull a positive out, okay?
positives. Um, uh, uh, I got to draw and paint a shoe bill and I really love them. I got to use my Hemi gouache more and that's always a good fun time. You guys got to see me in this new super soft wig that I'm super loving. Yes, I dressed up just to show this off. You're welcome. And um, I guess I got to make another video for you guys. So hopefully, hopefully you like it. Uh, since I did spend money on this, I'd really appreciate if you did all the engagements. So like commenting, subscribing, um, ringing that notification bell so you know when I post, I post every first 20 set. I'm sorry, 11, I skipped you. I post every first 11th and 22nd of every month. Rain or shine, it's the internet, it doesn't matter. Um, But for every like that I get, I will give my kitty cats 15 seconds of scritching. So get them likes up if you want them kitty cats to get their little scritchy scritches. Yeah, how about that? I'm playing hardball now. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's me, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. As per usual, I hope you're having a great day and making great art. See you later. Bye.